Hi, my name is Eric Bergen, and I'm the co-founder of Top Shelf Models. Uh, today I want to talk about the importance of discounted cash flow uh, modeling in real estate. So whenever I interview candidates uh, for financial analyst positions at Top Shelf Models, the most important factor in determining if they get the job done is their understanding of DCF valuations. Um, DCF is a, is a valuation method to determine the present value of an asset based on the projected future value of the cash flows. The future value cash flows are discounted back to the present value using a discount rate that we'll get into in a few minutes. Um, it's really important that the financial analysts understand the relationship between present value, future value, and that discount rate. Um, high level, and we'll get to the model here in a second, but high level um, present value equals the future value divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the number of time periods. Okay, So in real estate, the discounted cash flow um, valuation method is mostly used um, to value assets, to value investments. Um, most private equity real estate funds, they're going to value their investments um, at least annually um, or possibly more often if there's been material changes um, that have occurred. Um, so sometimes they value them quarterly, sometimes uh, annually. So there's lots of different ways you can value a real estate asset, uh, but you know the DCF valuations are commonly used. Um, the purpose of that DCF valuation is to determine the present value of the asset. Uh, the present value is then compared to the cost basis or the carrying value uh, on the books uh, to determine if there's an unrealized gain or loss on that investment. Um, another way that you can use DCF valuation in real estate is to determine the price you're willing to pay for the acquisition of an investment. So the valuation is going to project um, the revenues, the, ex the expenses, the capital expenditures um, throughout the anticipated hold period and then discount those future values uh, back to today um, to get the present value or the amount you're willing to pay today. So these calculations are complicated, uh, so we always use um, you know, our top shelf model um, Excel models to calculate these projections. So it, it, that takes the, um, the guesswork out of the projections. You input the, your assumptions into the assumptions tab and it gives you that future value uh, cash flow stream that you can use to determine the value of the asset uh, today. So, you know, what discount rate are you going to use? Um, really, you know, to reject the future value, um, you know, you need to look at, okay, yeah, we know what the future value investments are because we, we use a model uh, to, to determine those values, but how do we get back to present value? Well, we need the discount rate. And you know, it should factor in that discount rate should factor in the investments, cost of capital, uh, potential risks, um, and the risk-free rate of interest. So all of those work together to determine what discount rate you're going to use uh, in your DCF uh, analysis. So I'll, I'll run through an example here in a minute, but um, you know, really, there's two different ways um, to determine the to do a DCF valuation. One is going to be looking at an unlevered basis, uh, and another way is going to be looking at the levered basis. The unlevered basis, um, which we'll, you know, we'll jump into the model here, and I'll show you, the unlevered basis is going to show you what you should pay for the asset today. Okay, The levered uh, discounted cash flow method is going to look at your levered cash flow as your levered projected future values. Uh, discount that back so you can compare um, what your you know, investor, your equity cash flows are going to be. So if you look on the screen here, I've got, um, this is a uh, multifamily acquisition model, um, the top shelf model um, variety of that. Uh, we're going to go over to the monthly cash flow tab. Okay, so if we click on the monthly cash flow tab, we go up to the unlevered section here. So right now you can see that this um, unlevered model and these are just sample numbers. Uh, this sample investment is generating a 12.6 unlevered IRR. Okay, so let's say that you know you, you've done your analysis and you've determined that you know you want to use a 10% D 
discount rate uh, on an unlevered basis. Okay, how do you do that? Well, what I would do is come in here and a simple formula to use is the X NPV formula. So you say X NPV, and I want to use the a 10% rate, and then I'm going to select the values, which are going to be the unlevered cash flows. Okay, I'm going to select the values, and then I'm going to select the the dates. Okay, and the dates and the values need to line up, and there we go. And now this is going to show that. Okay, you know, right now we have a purchase price of $7 million. In order to get to a 10% IRR, you know, we, need to re we can reduce, I guess we need to raise the uh, purchase price by 856000 to reduce the unlevered IRR from a 12.6 down to a 10. Okay, so we can go back over to the Assumption tab and we can add that amount. So now we're gonna we're gonna pay 7.856 million for that, and you can see now that the unlevered IRR is equal to a 10. And this um, XMPV, which uses this the purchase price, which is input, is zero. Okay. So let's say you wanted to you know change from a 10 percent you know your targeted return or your discount rate. You know, I want that to be a, hey, you know, we, there's a little bit more risk in this investment, so I want to change it from a 10% to a 14% on an unlevered, okay? Well, that means we're overpaying by 1.28 million, so we, we need to go back to the assumption tab, go to the acquisition price, and, you know, we can reduce it um, by that amount to get to the 14 IRR on an on-lever basis, okay? So again, it's taking the future value, this X and BB formula is taking the future value of the cash flow stream, okay? And in this case, you know, we're holding it for five years, that's 60 months, so it's a five-year hold. We take all those future values and the X and BB discounts all of these future values in that cash flow stream back to today at the discount rate that we input. So whether that's 10% or 14% or whatever discount rate that you want to, to use. Okay. So that means that's how you determine what the purchase price of the asset is today. Now let's say that you've already acquired the asset and you know you're you're in a real estate fund, you're in a private equity fund, and you need to do your annual valuation. Okay, so let's say we're in June of 2020 and you want to see what the value of the future cash flow stream is at that date, okay? Same concepts, um, now present value is gonna be June of 2020, where you're gonna do the same thing, so X and PV, the rate, um, this is gonna be the rate of your, your equity cash flow, so let's say that's an 18% um, discount rate, and I'm gonna use the uh, future cash flows, so I'm gonna do June forward, and then I'm going to take the dates, so the values, and then take the dates, and you'll see that, you know, this is, you know, 3.1 million uh, of value here, okay, is what we're projecting, okay? So let's say you're, let's say your carrying value in your accounting books was, you know, 2.8 million, okay? And so that means that, you know, you have a, unrealized gain or loss of this difference, which works say this minus this. So you have an unrealized gain of 319, 320,000. Okay. So that means that, you know, maybe you need to value this, maybe you need to write it up. Um, you know, you can, can decide that based on this valuation method. But, you know, if if you go according to plan in June of 2020, um, you're going to have a write-up, okay? And that makes sense because, you know, time is, is a factor in the DCF analysis. So every month, every three months, you know, every year, you're getting closer to the termination value, okay? And that termination value is being discounted over less time periods, uh, which means that it's going to invariably, if there's no other changes, 
then your valuation will increase um, without having to make any changes to the underlying um, assumptions and the underlying uh, cash flows that go into the DCF formula. So be sure to check out our website. It is um, tsmfinancialmodels.com. We, uh, we have a blog where we are releasing uh, information every week. You can check out our custom model builder where you can build um, acquisition or development models to fit your uh, tailored needs. And you know, we will talk to you next time. Thank you.